At the conclusion of the show, when exiting the parking lot, please be sure to follow the lines indicated on the screen. A right-hand turn on Canal Street will bring you toward Boston and all points south. A left-hand turn will bring you toward Malden Square and all points north. Thank you and enjoy the show. The demolition of our antiquated City Hall and the reconnection of Pleasant Street as the main gateway to the heart of the city's downtown are finally nearing reality. Just this past Thursday, we signed a land disposition agreement with Jefferson Apartment Group, who plan to build a state-of-the-art, mixed-use, transit-oriented development on the combined City Hall Police Station site. The entire redevelopment project will greatly improve access to the heavily utilized Malden Center Station as well as the downtown. This significant step would not have been possible without the support of the City Council and the state's Mass Works Infrastructure Program, which through Governor Deval Patrick is providing $3 million to help realize this long-standing goal of the community. An internal review team consisting of MRA Director Debbie Burke, Controller Chuck Rannigan, Business Development Officer Kevin Duffy and Strategic Planning Analyst Ron Hogan will be working alongside City Councilors Jim Nestor, John Matheson, Barbara Murphy, Neil Kinnan, and Craig Spatafora to review the plans for the redevelopment and the relocation of City Hall and the police station. In 2013, we announced new leadership to both the fire and police departments. We appointed Jack Colangeli as Fire Chief and Kevin Mullis as Police Chief. Both are lifelong Malden residents who bring their extensive skills, years of experience, and strong community presence to the job. With the support of the City Council, the Fire Department is purchasing a new pump as well as a ladder truck. Additionally, through the use of a grant, a multilingual fire prevention brochure was created to help identify hazards and address questions of fire safety. Further community outreach was accomplished through public demonstrations, open houses, and public service announcements with Malden Access Television. The fire department is also in the process of partnering with SafetyNet by LoJack to implement an electronic tracking system. This system will facilitate the search and rescue of persons with cognitive disorders that are at risk of wandering off alone. The Mayor's Office has been working with the Special Education Parents Advisory Council to work out an agreement with LoJack so that the cost of the service to residents will be minimal. The Police Department, also with the support of the City Council, was able to increase the number of patrol offices which has allowed for the deployment of personnel in several areas of policing including a domestic violence detective, plainclothes anti-crime offices, two new school resource offices, and a walking beat officer in the downtown area. 
Officer Jean Lamore was assigned as the downtown beat cop to provide daily, face-to-face -face contact with business owners, residents, and visitors to the Malden Square area. Officer Brian Tilly was assigned as the high school resource officer, and Officer Gus Kruchewski is the K-8 resource officer. These officers provide a visible presence and assist the school administration in maintaining a safe and secure environment. More importantly, the officers develop close relationships with students who may need a positive influence in their lives or assistance in obtaining services. For the first time in the history of our city, the department has also brought on a civilian crime analyst who will identify patterns and trends in all types of crimes as they emerge. He will review and analyze police reports daily with the goal of helping the department direct resources to certain areas and finding hot spots of activity. The information will be utilized to develop effective tactics and strategies to address public safety issues and reduce crime. To further protect the safety of our residents, we now have 30 surveillance cameras installed throughout the city in strategic locations to help thwart criminal activity and or identify suspects that commit crime. I am pleased to report that as a result of our efforts and the hard work of the department, at the close of 2013, our crime stats were down 14% as compared to 2012. We continue to work on improving the education and learning environment of our students. U.S. News & World Report recognized Malden High School and the Mystic Valley Regional Charter School as two of the top 50 best high schools in Massachusetts. In September, along with Superintendent David DeRussi and the school committee, we unveiled an innovative citywide reading initiative. The program affords every family within the Malden zip code the tools they need to provide early learners with the literary experiences needed for academic success. Partnering with Footsteps to Brilliance, we launched comprehensive standards-based ebooks and learning apps that can be downloaded onto any smartphone, tablet, or computer. As part of this initiative, the superintendent and I challenged our early learners to read one million words by December 31, 2013. On November 27, one full month earlier than expected, our young readers beat our challenge and reached the one million word goal reading over 2,665 books. And I am happy to report that next week, we will be congratulating Miss McBride's kindergarten class at the Salemwood School for being the first class in the district to reach one million words. The Malden Public Library, under the leadership of Dora St. Martin, has also introduced a series of new e-resources for adults as well as children. This includes Overdrive, for ebooks, bestsellers, music, and movies, OneClick for downloadable audiobooks, Zinio, an online magazine service, and Mango Language Learning Service, where you can learn French, Arabic, Chinese, Haitian Creole, and many more languages right on your smartphone or personal computer. We have also been proactive when it comes to the safety, security, and crisis preparedness in our public schools. The emergency management team, with the guidance of Assistant Principal Peter Dolan, worked to revamp policies and craft comprehensive crisis plans and procedures. Mr. Dolan then implemented a training program on emergency preparedness for school administrators. Additionally, in December, the City Council voted to authorize funds in order to effectuate a security upgrade in the schools. This will involve surveillance cameras, keyless entries, building alarms, panic buttons, and door jams to lock doors from inside the classrooms. The project is already underway with the hope of finishing before the end of the school year. Our Summer Youth Employment Program hired over 330 of Malden's young job seekers this past summer. We strongly believe that a summer job is an essential first step toward building the skills, confidence and experience necessary for successful career development. In December, the Malden Teen Enrichment Center, MTech, celebrated its one-year anniversary. Membership has grown to more than 630 Malden teens. MTech has surpassed all of our expectations by achieving the goal of providing a welcoming and safe environment during non-school hours. The setting has proved to facilitate peer group interaction 
instill a sense of community, and foster healthier lives. Its success rests on the dedication of coordinator Kathy McMullen, the avid support of the community, and of course on all the teens that make use of the center and what it has to offer. Our recreation department offers yet another safe environment outside of school where kids of all ages can participate in quality and affordable programs that promote health and well-being. Under the direction of Joe Levine, the number of programs have increased remarkably, from Zumba Fitness, Boot Camp, and Open Gym, to basketball, tennis, and pickleball. There is something for everyone. We do what we can to help our youth, but let's face it, we can't take all the credit for the amazing things that the youth of Malden have accomplished this year. Sometimes the promise of success to a young student is not enough. They need to see it in the real world. I can't think of a better example of this than a young man who just a few short years ago walked the halls of Malden High School and now calls himself a Super Bowl champ. Congratulations to Breno Giacomini on his big win and thank you to him for never forgetting where he came from. Our Senior Center continues to offer a variety of educational programs, services, and recreational activities. I have been meeting with representatives from the local Mass Senior Action Council every month to not only identify the needs of our senior community, but to also explore options for meeting those needs. Although this provides a valuable informational forum, I have learned more about the pressing concerns of our seniors through social events such as the Mayor's Annual Cookout and through my participation in the Senior Bowling League. I have to admit, my average score leaves a lot to be desired. As we offer opportunities to our young and old, we also continue to celebrate one of Malden's greatest strengths, which lies in our cultural diversity. There's an old saying that a picture is worth a thousand words, and I can't think of a better way to highlight the diversity of our community than through the following images. Under the leadership of Kevin Jarvis, Veteran Service Officer, Malden had the privilege and honor of displaying the Vietnam Memorial Moving Wall for three days. The Moving Wall is a replica of the Washington, D.C. Vietnam Memorial and contains the names of more than 58,000 American patriots who died in Vietnam. The wall includes 19 Malden men who sacrificed their lives, 11 of whom are buried in Forestdale Cemetery. Malden proudly remembered the men and women who served in Vietnam, and we remain eternally grateful to those brave warriors who never made it back home. We thank Ward 4 City Councilor Jim Nestor for initiating the idea, and to our legislative delegation for helping us secure the funding to bring the moving wall to Malden. The week before Memorial Day, the city of Malden was one of the first cities in Massachusetts to dedicate a POW MIA Chair of Honor in its city council chamber and at its high school auditorium. These permanent displays are meant to educate the public about prisoners of war and service members still listed as missing in action. The commemorative empty seat assures that their sacrifice is not forgotten. Last Veterans Day, prior to the start of the annual Veterans Day Parade, Malden also dedicated a POW MIA chair at McDonald Stadium and became the very first city in Massachusetts and perhaps the United States to dedicate such a chair at its high school stadium. This year we also renovated and restored the Linden Victory Delta War Memorial and the monument at Private David Tartikoff Park. The rededications were to honor the memory of our veterans while improving the appearance of two public spaces. Staff Sergeant Albert Neal Spadafora Memorial Square was also dedicated as part of our Veterans Day celebration. 
All three memorials represent Malden's way to never forget those who answered the call to service but never came home. Finally, this year we mourn the loss of one of Malden's great World War II veterans, William Hughes. Bill was someone with deep Malden roots who was always such an important part of all of our veteran celebrations. He will be greatly missed. Malden has been upgrading its aging infrastructure. From the water, sewer, and drainage pipes buried beneath the ground, to the streets that we drive, live, and walk on, the city of Malden has paved 42 streets, planted over 150 new trees, and replaced approximately five miles of water main pipes, many of which were more than 100 years old. This investment would not have been possible without the support of the city council. We believe this will improve the quality of life for our residents. In the upcoming 2014 construction season, we intend to continue forward with this initiative. This will include the replacement and repair of approximately 10,000 feet of water mains, the rehabilitation of more than 40,000 feet in sewer mains, and more paved streets throughout Malden. The city's investment in geographical information systems provides a platform to better operate, manage, and rehabilitate our deficient infrastructure. Enhanced GIS technology is also allowing our city to improve project management, communication, and public outreach efforts. This month, Malden will begin maintaining all previously owned National Grid streetlights. The goal of this transition is to be more responsive to and accountable for the overall operation of the 3,700 streetlights across our city. The cost to purchase these lights will be paid off by the savings generated over time. Another goal once we have ownership is to begin converting from the traditional light to LED streetlights. After the winter we have had, I'm thinking about proposing an ordinance renaming the Department of Public Works to the Department of Snow Removal. Our snow emergency team has been meeting on what seems like a weekly basis. We have survived the weather thanks to the DPW work crew led by Director Bob Knox and the coordinated efforts of the police, permitting, inspections and planning, compliance, and the cemetery department who all assisted in improving our overall snow removal operation and in responding to the needs of residents. I was assured that our efforts at responding had greatly improved when at the height of the most recent storm, a resident's only concern was asking how to dispose of a microwave oven. A positive aspect of the reoccurring snow has been tweeting directly with our students when school is canceled but I think I may have taken it too far when in an effort to keep the lines of communication open, I also tweeted when school would be open again. The Problem Properties Unit continues to meet bi-weekly to improve our neighborhoods by addressing nuisance properties, including illegal rooming houses, vacant and abandoned properties, and properties with a history of public safety complaints and code violations. The multi-departmental unit utilizes a proactive approach and coordinates efforts to review possible solutions and identify remedial resources. This year, the unit organized the initiative of preserving our neighborhoods one ward at a time. The unit has taken the show on the road by walking some of Malden streets with the respective ward councilor. These walks not only help to identify possible problem properties, but also provides the opportunity to connect with residents and hear their concerns. I am pleased by the work of the Walkability Advisory Committee to make our city more pedestrian friendly. I believe that improvements to Malden's walkability infrastructure will increase pedestrian safety, enhance the quality of life for residents, and support the economic vitality of the city. The committee, led by Malden resident Sharon Santillo, meets monthly and is comprised of volunteers who are committed to finding the best practices to make Malden more walkable. A recommendation of the committee was for newer and better crosswalks. Based on the committee's research and with the assistance of DPW Director Bobby Knox, the city installed brand new crosswalks using thermoplastic material at intersections throughout the city. This durable material is applied with heat 
and has a life expectancy of three to five years which replaces traditional painting that wears off easily and must be reapplied each year. You may have also noticed the distinctive wayfinding signs that are boarded with an original design by world-renowned artist Frank Stella who was born in Malden. The signs help pedestrians better navigate the city and encourage a healthier lifestyle. The theme of the wayfinding sign program is connect the squares. Malden's different neighborhood squares are identified on the signs along with government and city buildings, schools, parks, and recreation facilities. Additionally, each sign names various Malden sites and displays the number of minutes it takes to walk to that location with arrows pointing in the appropriate direction. Walk Boston has told Sharon Santillo that Malden is the first city ever to combine artwork with walkability. The committee also recognized the need for educating residents about their responsibility to clear sidewalks after a snowstorm. The group created a brochure in multiple languages highlighting this information and detailing the requirements of our city ordinance. This aims at making our sidewalks safe and passable throughout the winter months. The work of these dedicated residents has inspired me to emphasize the importance of walkability in any way I can. Not sure if this is what they had in mind. Another way to walk the city is on the Northern Strand Community Trail, also known as the Bike Path. This nine mile community pathway stretches from the Malden Everett Line through Malden, Revere and Sargas toward the Lynn Waterfront. Many bicyclists, walkers, runners and those using non-motorized means of transportation can be seen enjoying this amenity on a daily basis. This past summer, we paved the three mile Malden portion so that residents can better enjoy this new way of traveling through the city. In fact, the cleaning of the path is now part of our snow removal efforts as it is used by our residents in all seasons and weather. We also celebrated the installation of our first community garden alongside the paved bike path between Bryant and Faulkner Streets. The idea originated with City Council Barbara Murphy and came to fruition with the help of resident Clay Larson and several hard-working volunteers including members from Bike to the Sea and many of our teens from the Malden Teen Enrichment Center. 25 gardening beds were constructed as well as a number of boarding areas for planting. The funding for the project came from a federal community development block grant obtained by the Malden Redevelopment Authority and private donations from Keurig Inc. and the nonprofit organization Seeds of Change. At the ribbon cutting event, the attendees not only viewed the gardens and plantings, but were also treated to fresh Malden grown salad. New technology has dramatically changed the way we communicate with the public. Beyond simply making information available and accessible, we are always exploring new and innovative ways to enhance citizen involvement promote transparency, and improve the delivery of services. Last year, we announced Malden's participation in the Commonwealth Connect program that implemented C-Click Fix as a tool for residents to report quality of life issues around the city. Commonwealth Connect has over 50 cities and towns in Massachusetts using the application, and for 2013 has reported having 17,000 requests logged in. I am happy to report that Malden is responsible for half of those. Not only are we number one in the program offered in Massachusetts, but we have consistently spent time as the number one ranked city in the entire country for C Click Fix usage and responsiveness. Our residents have literally become our eyes and ears on the street. Moving forward, we have three new initiatives a 311 call center a new Malden app, and a new way to facilitate government involvement. Our 311 call center is now up and running. The concept was developed with the help of City Councilor John Matheson, and residents will now have a convenient way to connect with City Hall. The center will be staffed by a team of volunteers who have generously given their time to help us better serve the public. For those customers who want to have information in the palm of their hands, our GIS department has developed a quick way for residents to have easy access by simply typing in an address on the web 
or on a mobile phone. Whether you are a new resident to Malden or have lived here all your life, the My Malden app will not only help locate a particular place, but will assist in obtaining other important information about our city, such as polling locations, parking restrictions, and trash and recycling pickup days. It will also help identify nearby businesses, parks, recreational areas, and public transportation. We are also revolutionizing the way residents participate in the governing process. We recently partnered with Granicus, the industry-leading government transparency and citizen collaboration solution provider. The hope is to do with our legislative process what TiVo and DVR did for your favorite TV shows. The City Council and School Committee have already begun to use Granicus to post agendas and minutes in an easy-to-use web portal where you can follow along with any public meeting in an on-demand video environment. Finally, I am happy to announce that in March we will debut the new cityofmalden.org. We have spent hours on the planning, development, and execution of what will be a leading website among municipalities in Massachusetts. We formed a team of Malden residents to help guide us through the process along with industry leaders and graduate students from Bentley University's Information Design Program. These efforts have led to a site that is cost-effective yet will be considered cutting edge. The new website features a fresh new design that incorporates much of the imagery we have collected over the last couple of years. The site looks great on the usual sized desktop monitor, but knowing that each year more and more users access the web over mobile devices, we incorporated what is known as responsive design so that there is a consistent experience across all devices. As you can see, many new businesses have made Malden their home. We have worked hard to attract business ventures of all sizes. We are so pleased with the outcome that we now celebrate grand openings with gigantic scissors and ribbons. Much of the credit goes to Kevin Duffy, our strategy and business development officer who guides business owners through the city's permitting and licensing process to facilitate a healthy business climate. Not only are we working to encourage new business activity, but we have also made it a point to help expand existing Malden businesses as well. Additionally, we have worked with first-time entrepreneurs looking to get established. Stockpot Malden is one such establishment. They have angel investors serving as a food truck incubator and have signed a lease for space on Pearl Street. In the past year, we have added 350 jobs to our downtown and increased the daytime density in our city. Our goal in 2014 is to bring in even more employers. This will provide the opportunity for residents to live and work here in Malden and also provide businesses with more customers. We had this goal in mind when we negotiated surrounding community agreements with the proposed casinos for Greater Boston. These agreements call for the winner of the license to spend millions of dollars on Malden-based businesses to supply the proposed development. And finally, I want to conclude this State of the City address by recognizing the important role of the Malden Chamber of Commerce in supporting and advancing our local businesses. With that, I would like to announce the launching of its Shop Local Malden initiative that will go live on March 14th. All Chamber members will receive three Shop Local Malden loyalty cards, which can be used at a variety of member businesses throughout the city. I hope you will participate with me in this worthwhile program and invite you to learn more by visiting www.shoplocalmalden.org. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the show. The Mayor's Summer Youth Program has been around for 1,554 years. Before. Just use that, though. <laughs> you guys got to script me. Nah, I hate free forming. I hate it. Host, host. Thank you very much. Now nah, I got another take. And so I hope you'll uh, join me. And for me, it's a great place to outrun my constituents.
What this path means to Malden is that we now have a place for people to bike, ride, walk, run, wrestle, ski. <laughs> so close, yet so far. What else can you do here? Hi, I'm Gary Christensen, Mayor of the City of Malden, and I am thrilled to have missed this opportunity for these two bikers to be in this video that were just behind me. <laughs> How do you close that out? You gotta script this next time. At least bullets. And finally, I want to conclude this State of the City address by recognizing this important role of someone. 